What's good, Trifling Ones family? This is Pastor G, and wanted to let you know that this is mid-November, and so around this time, I usually take some time to get some rest, and so this is going to be the last podcast episode for the year 2023. So the next time you hear my voice, and it's a fresh episode, it will be the year 2024. I want to say thank you to each and every one of you who have been supporters throughout uh, the past couple of years, because I'm now two years old in terms of uh, the podcast started November 17th, 2021. And I'm just asking that you all continue to ride with me, continue to share, continue to give your feedback. I'm going to be taking some time to seek God on what the next direction is going to be for the podcast so that whatever it is that we do next, it'll be according to his divine will. Now, let's get into this message. Surrender. Surrender is a nine-letter curse word for many of us. <laughs> what do I mean? By itself, surrender is a term that has no positive connotation. I mean, if you think about it, for those of us who are real ones, like, we don't use the word surrender. It's a verb. It's an action word that describes something that one must do. And that thing that one must do when we're talking about surrendering is to relinquish, to give up, to submit, to wave the white flag. And all of this, in my opinion, is considered unconscionable, meaning this is not something that we want to do. I surrendered. There's no way to say that and it sounds cool or, or good. But surrender also means to cease resistance to. It means to stop fighting against. And today we're going to talk about the one way that surrender makes you better. So stay tuned as we talk about the topic, I give up, I surrender. Coming up next on The Trifler Ones. All right, so the text that we're going to come from today is Galatians chapter 2, verse 20. I'm reading from the NIV version. It's Galatians chapter 2, verse 20. And it says, I have been crucified with Christ, and I no longer live, but Christ lives in me. The life I now live in the body, I live by faith in the Son of God, who loved me and gave himself for me going to read it one more time. I have been crucified with Christ and I no longer live, but Christ lives in me. The life I now live in the body, I live by faith in the Son of God who loved me and gave himself for me. Three points that we're going to talk about today, fam. And the first is we must condemn our instinctive selves. We must condemn our instinctive selves. Paul says, I've been crucified with Christ, meaning I had to metaphorically or symbolically kill myself. The man that I was, the, the mindset that I held, the values that were important to me. The word for crucified in the Greek is sustarao, which means to impale. That would make sense when you talk about crucifying but it is symbolically used as a spiritual identification with Christ. Simply put, are we living a surrendered life? We must condemn the natural, instinctive self, the self that is selfish and self-centered, the, the self that wants to burn everything around us, burn it all down when we've been hurt. The self that loses it when we can't control what's happening in our life. See, it's nice when we have the, the knowledge and the resources, the expertise, etc., to handle everything that life will hand us. But if we could, then we might mess around and think that we don't need him no more. See, because then we did this. We figured this out. We had the money. We came to the rescue. What parts of ourselves are we holding on to that we need to let go of, that we're not surrendering? We were born in sin and shaped in iniquity. That's what the word of God says. 
And then we're also told to all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. So instinctively, we are trifling. So we must condemn our instinctive selves. We must be crucified on a daily basis. But then our second point is we must commit to an immersed spirit. We must commit to an immersed spirit. The text again says, the life I now live in the body, I live by faith in the Son of God who loved me and gave himself for me. This ain't about willpower. It isn't about outthinking a thing. It isn't just about the, the power of positivity. It, it isn't about listening to your favorite motivational speaker. But what it is about is committing to live by faith in God, immersing ourselves in his spirit so that he controls us and he guides us. The word immerse means to be submerged in. It means to be covered by. It means to be deeply in something. So when we talk about we must commit to an immersed spirit, we're talking about being controlled by, covered by, submerged in the spirit of God. Acts 17, 28 says, for in him we live and move and have our being. That means that we allow him to be in control. That's how we move. That's how we live. That's how we have our being in him. We are immersed in, submerged in, and covered by him. For those of us who provide leadership to others, who are responsible for others, who are considered strong, this is tough because we like to control stuff. We like to know that we we know what's going to happen. We feel so much more comfortable when we have a feeling of what the outcome is. We feel much better when we got a lot of money in the bank versus when we have to be immersed in him in that situation. This is where we surrender to the spirit and allow him to help us. Then we live by faith in the son of God. So we must condemn our instinctive selves, we must commit to an immersed spirit, literally being dunked in his spirit, kind of like baptism. But then finally, we must concede to the incontrovertible son. We must concede to the incontrovertible son. What does that mean? Paul says, the life I now live in the body, I live by faith in the Son of God who loved me and gave himself for me. Paul is telling us that he had to concede to or give in to the incontrovertible, the irrefutable Son of God who loved him enough to die for him. Nobody can doubt the fact that Jesus, the Son of God, loved him enough to die for him. And He's done the same thing for you and I. Paul was convinced that this was the son of God who was discussed in the Garden of Eden in Genesis when God said that Adam's seed would bruise the head of the serpent. That was Jesus he was talking about. Paul was convinced that this was the ram in the bush for Abraham when he was told to kill his son Isaac. But then this ram, this ram that had done nothing wrong, sacrificed itself so that Isaac could live. That was symbolic of Jesus, y'all. Paul was convinced that this was the sacrificial, unblemished lamb that was killed and skinned and sacrificed in the holiest of holies in the temple in the Old Testament during the Jewish day of atonement. That was symbolic of Christ, y'all. Paul had conceded that it is only through the son who loved us and died for us that we can successfully surrender to God. That same concession must be made by us. Lust, greed, envy, lying, doubt, jealousy, disbelief, arrogance, whatever your thing may be, we must concede it. We must give it over to the incontrovertible son. So I'll say with pride the words, I give up, I surrender, not to an opponent, not to a situation, not to something I'm scared of, but rather to Jesus. 
So remember that we must condemn our instinctive selves, be prepared to symbolically take out our natural sinful selves. We must commit to an immersed spirit, meaning be committed to being under the control of, being covered by the Spirit of God. And finally, we must concede to the incontrovertible Son. We got to turn it all over to the Son of God who died for us. And through these three things, we can say, I give up. I surrender with no shame. Heavenly Father, we come before you now recognizing that we must surrender who we are in order to be able to operate in who you are. My God, we are asking that you would strengthen us during our weak periods, allow us to turn over control to you so that you can have your way. Everything that comes our way, every situation we may face, every task that we put our hands to, allow us to surrender to you. Allow us to symbolically kill ourselves so that we can be just like you. Lord, we are sorry for the things that we didn't do that we should have and the things that we did that we shouldn't have. Forgive us. Wipe us clean. And dear God, I ask that you would keep us while we're from another, while I'm getting rest. And yet again, bring us back together again so we can be in fellowship with you through this program, The Trifling Ones. All these things we ask in your Son and our Savior, in Jesus Christ's name we pray. And all of The Trifling Ones said, Amen. I love you, fam. Thank you.